Hey, I want to talk about flush and cooling systems today. Kind of the standard method for, for many of us for over the years uh, for flushing our cooling systems has been um, to get one of the flush and fill kits that you know puts a T into the uh, upper uh, one of the heater hoses and you pop one of these little guys into the radiator neck so that it can spill out. You hook your garden hose up to the T and then you flush it out, get it good and clean, open up your radiator drain and drain out as much water as you can and then you fill it up with coolant and you go on until the next time. Well, I did that for years. I still think it's a good, uh, there's nothing wrong with that method, but I never pulled the block drains. The block drains especially on a V8, they're a little, sometimes a little hard to get to, they're down around the engine mount area, they're underneath. Uh, sometimes they're really hard to break loose. So I never did it. And you know this car when I bought it had a rebuilt engine in it. Every two, three years I'd drain the coolant and flush. But after you know 20 plus years I was having trouble with cooling. It really got complicated because I even replaced the radiator and, and I got a bad uh, design radiator that made the situation worse. I got to the point where, again, after you know 20 years, 25 years, uh, the car started to want to run hot. It was running, it always ran a little hot, but it kept getting, you know, it was running hotter and hotter. And when I say that, I mean in traffic, you know, 230, 235 on a normal 70 or 80 degree day. Then I was getting into things like afterboil, where I'd bring the car, I'd park it in the garage, and, it, and you could hear the coolant was boiling in the block. So I finally went underneath, and I opened up the block drains. It was a little hard to get to them, but, uh, but I pulled the block drains out, and a funny thing happened. Nothing came out. Not a drop. They were plugged up solid. I went in with a screwdriver and broke through. It was hard. I mean, I had to put a screwdriver in there and I had to hammer on it to push through that crud so that it would drain. You know, you're probably thinking next, well, solved, right? Let her drain out, put the plugs back in, and you're all good again. Well, the answer was no. I got some uh, Prestone, uh, some of the sta their standard, what they call heavy-duty flush. And the heavy-duty flush these days is mostly citric acid. And you're supposed to put it in and drive it mm, 200 miles or so. I did that. And on this car, you know, two, three, four hundred miles is a whole season. And when the car's running hot, you tend not to take it out because you don't want to get stuck. So it took, I had to really work to get 200 miles on it and then flush it. What happened was, um, I put in the flush, I ran it 200 miles, and went down to the bottom and guess what? Yeah, those holes were plugged up again. There was more sludge had worked its way down and was blocking that hole and I had to go punch it out. I repeated that process several times actually over a period of, mm, I don't know, two years or so. I think I went through two seasons with using the heaviest dose recommended of the super flush driving it around as much as I could, and then draining it. And every time I kept getting more sludge in there. Finally, um, it, it was getting, it, I, I needed to go further. And I actually, um, this is something I can't recommend because safety hazards, environmental, and so forth. But um, I went back and researched and I found that back in the olden days when I was a teenager, we had uh, heavy-duty radiator cleaners that were acid and a neutralizer. I went back and found what those, what that mixture was and basically recreated it myself. And I'll just say is, you know, I did it. I was very, very careful. I captured everything I could so it could go to the hazmat people. Um, I wore, you know, my safety gear, goggles, um, respirators, because the acid mists are, you know, everything's kind of harmful. But I ended up doing um, at least, I can't remember if it was two or three, uh, additional flushes where I would run a heavy-duty cleaner. Those heavy-duty cleaners, instead of 200 miles, you'd run them for like an hour. I could do it in the driveway. Run it for an hour, drain it, put in the neutralizer, run it for 
a time and then drain it. And finally, I managed to get the bottom of the block cleared out. I went to that heavy duty cleaner because frankly I was getting frustrated to the point where I thought I was going to need to pull the engine and get in there with mechanical tools, rods, something and knock all that stuff out of there. So my recommendation is when you do coolant flushes, don't just do the top side. Get down underneath and take the time and trouble and pull those block drains because what I learned is that you know you get corrosion, you get scale, you get whatever and it all goes down into the bottom of the block, down into that into the V under the, at the bottom of the cylinders in, in that water jacket and it builds up and over years, if you got a classic car especially over years uh, you, can, you can build up a lot of junk I'll just put it that way but when I go do the Camaro the next time the block drains will come out and I'm going to make sure that that all the sludge comes out of the bottom and let me say that you know for those that might be skeptical um, about flushing this is an official SPX uh, 6043 if you haven't ever seen one of these before this is a power flush gun and you can put a hundred PSI off your air compressor on the bottom of it you put the garden hose on the back end and you can connect this with an adapter into the heater hose and you you can go in and you know you trigger this gun and power flush the block and I power flush the block and I power flush the block I did use the Prestone flush and I power flush the block didn't move anything because all the scale is down there at the bottom and you can't get enough flow down there to go at it so it took a heavy chemical cleaner followed by having the block drains open so that gravity would let that stuff flow out into a pan where you could collect it and uh, and eventually I got it there alright so here I am underneath the 428 you can see the blue oil pan and the oil pan rail engine mount and over there is the uh, is the block drain plug so that hex plug um, in the middle of the screen there is the block drain on the left hand side of the block and there's another one the same way so it, generally if you go into a V8 engine you'll find one in the lower side of the V on each side and that's the guy that you gotta pull out if you want to get complete draining of your block it's kinda messy because when you pull them out it sprays all over the steering linkage and the exhaust manifold and it kinda makes a mess but in the end it's uh, very much worth it. I will add in the rest of the story which is um, I had, had with Mustangs, my other Mustangs in the past, I had had some cooling issues with radiators and so I put a new radiator in this car. I went and bought one from a reproduction place. It proved to be a bad design and it wasn't as good as the other Mustang, as the original Mustang radiator and it took me a while to figure that out. Um, if you ever get into replacing one of these, make sure that you count the tubes in the radiator, the tubes across, the, the number of rows, and how many fins per inch you have in the core. This radiator, uh, the factory radiator, was like 13 fins per inch, and the replacement I got was like about 8 or 9 fins per inch, and it made this whole cooling thing, you know, even worse. That's kind of a topic for another day but just something to watch out for again when you're restoring any one of these cars that that your replacement part is as good as what the factory originally had in there in any case make sure you pull the block drains it's really important